All Progressives Congress Board Executive in Kano State suspends party national chairman Abilai Ganduje of allegations of bribery as local government escrow also suspend what executive for the action. For another consecutive month, headline inflation in Nigeria rises to 33%, but inflation now stands at 40% all in the months of March. Hello and welcome to Politics Today, reaching you live from our global headquarters here in the nation's commercial nerve center, Lagos. I'm Jeffrey Uzonga. Now, there's a lot to unpack as we track the polity and its associate, associated intrigue, as you can see, uh, what's been happening in the country. Today on the program, we will focus on what's been playing out in the APC in parts of the country, from the suspension of the party's national chairman by the ward executives and the reported counter-suspension uh, by, by to, of those ward executives uh, to the politics of Ondo State and more. But first, let's tell you that the president, Bola Tinubu, is back in Abuja after spending about a week at his private residence here in Lagos when he came to spend the Salah holidays to Mark Idel Fittery. It was received at the presidential wing of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport by top government officials, including the APC National Chairman Abdullahi Gunduje, Chief of Staff to the President Femi Bajabi Amila, the FCT Minister Nyesong Wike, among others. And there's an update on that invasion in Oyo State in Ibad on Saturday, where the Oyo State Police Command, <clears throat> excuse me, today paraded 21 suspects arrested in connection with the attack on the state government secretariat. The invaders, who claim to be members of the Yoruba Nation Agitation Group, were paraded alongside impounded exhibits, including guns, foreign camouflage, ammunition, plaques with group insignia, cutlasses. Uh, walkie-talkie and other communication gadgets. The Oyo State Commissioner of Police, Adebola Hamza, told journalists that the investigations has been intensified to arrest other suspects at large and their sponsors as well. He emphasized that the suspect will be charged with treasonable felony and terrorism. We have more stories for you, including the fact that the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission NUPRC has formally declared the National Oil and Gas Reserve position as Nigeria's proven crude oil and condensate reserve stands at 31.56 billion barrels and 5.94 barrels respectively, amounting to a total of 37.50 billion barrels in data January 1st, 2024. The gas and non-associated gas reserve stands at 0, 102.5 59 trillion cubic feet and 106.67 TCF, that's what it's called, resulting in a total gas reserve of 209.26 TCF. Now, during a press conference in Abuja, the Commission's Chief Executive, Mr. Agbenga Komolafe, says the Commission is creating strong policy direction, essentially aimed at optimizing, enhancing oil and gas operations in the country. According to him, issues related to crude oil supply regulation and enforcement is vital in prioritizing the supply of feedstock to local refineries and addressing complaints from oil producers and down to refinery within this stipulated period. So you can see exactly how rich we are as a country when it comes to our reserve. Although uh, we reported, I think yesterday or the day on Friday, I can't remember now, but we reported the fact that our production output has reduced. Uh, we were doing 1.4 in January. We came down to 1.3 million barrel per day in February. And last month, uh, in March, OPEC released this number that we're now doing 1.2. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Oil, Mr. Heineken Lakbobri had mentioned the fact that there was some maintenance being done and all of that is sorted out and all of these issues will be addressed. So this information is quite critical that our oil reserve is quite a bit, but we have to juxtapose that with what is happening with our production level. But that's not all we have for you on the program. We have a lot to talk about as far as the politics is concerned, but let's bring you our political roundup stories.
ahead of this Saturday's governorship primary election of the All Progressive Congress in Ondo State, the state governor, Mr. Lucky Ayedatiwa, who is also contesting in the race, says he's sure of victory owing to the overwhelming turnout of supporters he's getting across the 18 local government areas of the state. He was speaking during his campaign tour of Akure North and Idanre local government areas, where he reiterates the commitment of his administration to the development of the state if voted as governor. Similarly, a governorship aspirant of the Upper Progressive Congress in Ondo State, Senator Jimo Ibrahim, says he's confident of winning the primary's ticket. Mr. Ibrahim stated this in an interview with Channel's Television during his campaign tour of Oka Akoko Southwest Local Government Area of the state. He appeals to all party delegates to conduct themselves in a peaceful manner. As part of efforts to curb the menace of insecurity in the nation's capital, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mr. Yenso Wike, had distributed 100 motorcycles to security agents at the FCT. While flagging of the distribution at the FCTA headquarters in Abuja, Mr. Wike warned security agencies against mismanagement and appeals to them to utilize the motorcycles to fight insecurity in the rural areas. Elder Statesman Chief Edwin Clark says no government has given the abduction of the Chibok girls the urgent attention it deserves, even as he faulted President Bola Tinubu for failing to take effective action on this pressing issue. Chief Clark spoke during a meeting in Abuja and called on President Tinubu to establish a special task force devoted to the search for the Chibok girls, Leah Sharibu, and others still held captive by terrorists. He adds that former President Gulag Jonathan's efforts to secure the girls were hampered by saboteurs within his government. Ahead of the National Executive Council meeting of the People's Democratic Party, some concerned groups of the party from the North Central are asking the National Working Committee of the party to retain the seat of the national chairmanship position to Benue State, where the suspended national chairman of the party, Mr. Iyocha Ayu, comes from. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, a former federal lawmaker, Senator Jeff Oka, explains that the constitution of the party allows a replacement of the chairman or any other national officer who's suspended to be replaced with another member from the same zone. They're asking the party to appoint a former governor of Benue State, Mr. Gabriel Suswam, as the national chairman of the party. This group of North Central stakeholders has unanimously agreed to appeal to the, for the retention of the seat of the North Central chairman of a great party the PDP in the North Central Zone. Welcome back. A lot will focus on the politics of the APC across uh, Kanu and on those states. And we're going to be talking about this because uh, we just uh, a few hours ago, the chairman of the party, national chairman, Abdullah Ganduje was suspended by the Ganduje ward in that local government area of Kano State. There was a counter uh, suspension also, uh, suspending the members of the ward, the executive of the ward for six months. We're going to help, uh, we're going to see how we can make sense of that situation. Also, let's remind you that in November this year, Ondo State will be going to the polls to choose a new governor. Uh, and the incumbent governor who succeeded the late Arakunri Olarotimi Akeredolu is seeking re-election. And there were all the 15 of them. So there you have the list. So, Governor Loki Aida Tiwa, Mr. Kekemeke, um, you can see all the lists. Mr. Adema, Jimo Ibrahim, Wahid, Adekojo, um, Ihinlan Wo, uh, Mr. Mrs. Uh, Mayowa, Akin Teriwa, Adewali, and the list goes on. So about 16 of them uh, have been cleared by the APC uh, Screening Committee at the national headquarters of the party. So all of these gentlemen and ladies will be slogging it out on April the 20th, which is a primary of the party uh, in Ondo State. So 16 of them will be, de will be decided upon as so who will flag the parties, uh, who will be the party's flag bearer. We've been joined on the program for this conversation uh, by the publicity secretary, of the Ondo State Governorship Screening Committee, Mr. Bimbo Daramola. He joins us from our Abuja studio. Mr. Daramola, thank you so much, and it's good to see you looking great. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It feels good to be here. Looking great, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> no, you, you look great, just in my corner. <laughs> Nice to see you again. <laughs> thank good you very much. You. 
Um, and by before, the way, it's not. I'm not the publicity secretary. I'm the secretary of that committee. Okay, my well, secretary of the uh, screening committee. That that's uh, screening noted. committee. Yes. All right. Absolutely. So thank you. Before we get to the core of the politics, uh, two things happen. I want to have your take on these uh, broad issues. Then we'll get to what happened at the screening because your part is in power. Uh, we can see that the headline inflation is up again, 33.2%, up from 31.7%. And if you compare that from where this administration is coming from, which was about 22% or so, between May and March, it has risen almost 10% increase in terms of inflation. And if you put food inflation, which is the highest, which stands at 40% now, it has increased from about 24% to now uh, 40%, which is about... 15% rise in food inflation. And the federal government is targeting 21% at the end of the year. Uh, so is the APC government really renewing hope based on these numbers that we're seeing in terms of the inflation number? I needed to have your take on this uh, first issue. Well, let, let, me, let me thank you very much for um, the opportunity to see you here again. But... Um, We've gone back and forth and um, talking about the response of the economy to what the administration of the Bola, Ashua Jubola, Ahmed Tinubu, and his government, what they've been doing over the past uh, almost um, 12 months, almost 11 months now. <clears throat> I'm also sure that you are aware that pundits, economic pundits, have also alluded to the fact that things will get a little bit on this bumpy stretch for a little bit, for a while. And this is not defensive. There is no way that we can turn the economy and economics of this country into a switch where you press one button, the light comes on, and then you press the same button, the light goes off by the same token. I believe very strongly that there's a lot of war going on economically between what this administration met on ground and the assiduous responsibility to deal with the issues. Um, it feels extremely bad that um, things have deteriorated and gone on this downward slip and spiral for such a long time. But it didn't just start today. And that's not begging the issue. And I've had reasons to say this to a number of people. Even if you're going to knock your wife pregnant, you would have to consistently work on that until it manifests. And then when the conception is eventually I, I mean, I, I mean, attained, you will have to wait nine months for the joy of conception. Now, in real terms, economy responds to a, not a lot of factors, a lot of factors. Some of them, you don't have absolute control on them. And because you don't have absolute control, what you try to do is that you begin to either forecast and then respond as much as possible. When you forecast, you are in a position to streamline things to work the way you have planned them. But when you have a situation where you have a fair accompli on you, what you need to do now is to say, how do I deal with this situation? My brother, it is, it's going to be very difficult to fix or to turn around the hand of the, hand of the clock in two months. But I will isolate a particular one that, 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 that people have not talked about, which is also one of the indices that will eventually amount to how the economy will look like in another seven, eight months from now, the issue of the dollars, the dollar rates and the way it is spiraling down today will also have consequential effect in another seven, eight months, particularly for guys who will have to, don't forget that this economy has largely been described as one that is import dependent. And so that is not good in itself, but we didn't get here today. So if you're going to turn back the hand of clock, you have to consistently work on all of the indicators that has brought us here. For instance, and I'll give you another example. Have you seen the report of the EFCC with regards to what the EMS man at the time did with the Central Bank of Nigeria? And you are thinking, do you honestly think it would be fair to expect that this economy work would not respond to that shock? It wasn't even a shock at some point. It had become the manifest reality of that administration. The economy was getting all the bashing from all sides. You understand? I mean, we emorrayed. The economy practically emorrayed. We were bleeding from everywhere. 
And I saw that report yesterday, and I was asking myself, how could Ashwaju have been able to turn things around in one month or in one year? It's impossible. So um, what I will say, what I will say P is that P we also need everything to rest on what are we doing right today? We will continue on that trajectory. Whatever wrong had been done, we need to wind back and now get to the point where we say, okay, how do we springboard into the future to catch up? There are a number of things. There's the fiscal side, the monetary side, and all of those things that we may not have time to fully exhaust. This is one topic, or it should be a program, a one-hour program on its own. You know, but it's good that you have also spotlighted it because it makes a lot of sense because Nigerians are hungry. And we must exactly. be, we can't be talking about elections, politics, politicians every time. We must also situate everything we do in this context of how does this affect an ordinary Nigerian. And I'm happy yes. that you started, you started with economy. Yeah, uh, abs absolutely. Uh, I needed your take because the APC was a government in power, still in power, and we're seeing the great work being done to see how the Naira is fighting back strongly and rebounding as much as possible. Uh, but the challenge, again, I want you to speak to before we leave this issue of the economy is the fact that some people are complaining that the prices of goods and services are not responding drastically as they should. So where is this disconnect? I don't know whether you're an economist, just your comment on it. Okay, let me give you an example. This may be, this is jocular. This may be a little bit on the funny side, but this was what happened to me today. A friend of mine who was also, who had, all, who had for all of the time been complaining about how the dollar, how the dollar to the Naira went all the way to an all-time high of 1,900. And then all of a sudden, today somebody gave him a $100 bill and he went to zone four to change it. <laughs> and it turned out that dollar had come to 1,050, and he got angry. The same guy who was hungry and livid because dollar went to an all-time high of 1,900. Now today, somebody gave him a $100 bill, and he got angry that dollar had come down to 1,050. Now, the corollary to that is the fact that Nigerians, by our construct, sometimes we could be very unscrupulous, and we must admit that. People who have even stuck, who really have stuck, even before now, mm. are saying to themselves that we didn't just buy those products today. We bought those. Okay, fine. I'll give you an example of some guy. Has All right, just in 30 seconds. Who, also, yeah, on the side of everything that the, gov the president is doing to take the value of the dollar down, or to, uh, compared to the Naira. But all of a sudden, the things started hitting home when you see that you have bought X good for that amount of money at a pricey sum of Naira, and all of a sudden Naira is coming down, you're not going to sell that product all of all because Naira started coming down in two weeks. The first, the first inclination is to say that I need to recoup my money. And then begin to adjust your prices to those reflections when you stabilize a little bit. You all cannot right. buy mm. a bottle of water, you, ca you cannot stock, you cannot stock for 1,000 Naira. And then because dollar came down in, uh, in one week or in two weeks, you now forget the fact that that, pro that product that you're selling, that you're selling, you actually stocked at a very huge cost. All right, all right Mr. Daramala. So we need to also understand. No, just land on your thought. Just land on your thought so we can jump to the politics. Yes, we, we need to. We need to one, thing, one thing that we must agree in this country is the fact that there is the process of time. Even economics and economists, will tell you that everything is conditioned on time. There are no quick fixes here. It's not going to happen. If we have right, gone so, through this level of rot right. and went all the way down, it's going to be a hard work like this administration is doing to, right. to come back to, from ground zero now to be able to build upon it. That's all the right, reality. I, 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 I'm, sure, I'm sure that the economists will be able to respond to all of these questions when, when, when we bring them. But I needed your take on all of this because... Uh, afternoon, this afternoon, the MBS released those numbers and we have to speak to it because these are macroeconomic indicators. It speaks to how well or how not well we're doing as an economy. And as the government in power, it's important we get your response. But well, thank you for those responses. Uh, uh, I, I totally but, agree that you should do that because politics makes no sense if it doesn't translate into better life for the people. It doesn't absolutely. make sense. 
Let, let's now come to the issue of, before we get to the nitty gritty of the Ondo uh, screening that you were a uh, part of, uh, the news that broke that the APC national chairman has been suspended, Abdullah Ganduje, by his ward executive. I don't know what will be your initial response to that. Well, again, let me say this to you, that politics is a pack of, is a putpourri of all kinds of characters. I don't have the details just as it is, but from what I tried to look at and all of that, I am not too sure that these guys aren't modern skit makers from the North. I, I, I think, and this is a serious issue, you just don't wake up one day and suspend the national chairman of the party. That's the number, man, number one man of this party. That's, that's as basic as he could get. And then, have you forgotten that the APC has a constitution? And whatever any member gets to do must find accommodation within the principles, within, within the articles of this constitution. Any other thing you're doing, you're acting a skit or you're, prank, you're, you're, on a, you're on a prank. Article 21 is clear. And from 21 to 20, 21.1 to 21.2 to 21.3, clearly say, tells you that even if, assuming without conceding, even if there was anything that anybody feels aggrieved about, there are processes, there are procedures, there are laid down. This is the ground norm of the APC. And so if your actions don't find expression within this constitution, whatever you're doing, you're, you're, just, a, you're just a joke master. I don't know what the details are, but from what I gathered, somebody's talking about, oh, okay, Ali Fro I mean, allegations of uh, impropriety against the chairman and all of that. Have you exhausted the internal mechanism of the party to deal with it? So if you have not exhausted internal mechanism of the party, would you have taken the right decision? And it's unfortunate that our politics has gone to, has gone to this all-time low. In the days of AD, in the days of... Um, UPN, in the days of uh, NPN. I don't know any member of the NPN that will suspend an Addis Akiloi. However, yeah, Mr. Damarola, if, if, right if, if I may butt in, uh, so, so that we, we build on this and get to the issue of Ondo, this is how we started. We can call national, past national chairman that it started like a joke like this. We can start with Adam Sushomal in your party, Iocha you in the PDP, uh, Uche Secondos in the PDP. Uh, so this may not be taken with kids' glove. Don't you think so? Le yes. You know, I was, going to, I was going to wrap up that, that aspect of response with this, with this caveat. If a blind man says, I'm going to stone you, a blind man, if he says, I'm going to stone you, if he doesn't have the stone in his pocket, that pebble in his pocket, he's probably putting his leg on it. You got to be very careful. Where these guys are going to get all of the guts that they need to go haul out for the juggler and then go in for the, for the national chairman of the party, um, well, I don't know where, that go, where, the, where they got the guts. All right. So all right, this right. is where the caveat is. All right, Mr. Adamola, my, sure my apologies, my apologies for botting in, sir. Uh, I understand we're due for a break. We're going to come back after this break. And please don't drop your thoughts. We'll pick it up from there. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Ms. Bimbo Daramola, the Secretary of the Ondo State Governorship Screening Committee of the APC. You see with us in the studio, but for a moment, we're going to go off our DSTV platform. We're going to bring you the Nigeria Police Awards and Commendation event taking place in the nation's capital, Abuja. But on our terrestrial platform, as well as online, where we're streaming, you continue to enjoy politics today. So yet again, on our DSTV, the awards ceremony of the Nigeria Police Awards and Commendation uh, is coming up live at the moment, where we continue politics today on terrestrial and our streaming platform. Mr. Daramola, thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, I, I did say that I will allow you to land on your thought on the issue of um, the action by the word executive to suspend Mr. Abdullah Ganduje before we move on to the screening. Go ahead, sir. Oh, yes. Um, when, when you find situations like this, you know, um, 
it, it, it's worrisome. Again, let me say to you that I am, I am, my attitude and disposition to this is to be, um, to tread with a lot of caution. Caution to say that, you know, when the, when the water icing begins to die, to, die, to dance on the surface of the pond or the surface of the, of, of the river or whatever it is, there's something that Yoruba say, the drama is actually beneath the river. I am not too sure that the guys who got together the executive of that ward, of the national chairman of the party, would have that level of te that temerity, that boldness to undertake this action. And so we need to be very careful here. Um, so I'm going to be very circumspect. I'm going to approach this with a lot of caution. I'm going to tread on the part of caution to say that whatever grouse that could have um, informed this decision and the boldness, whoever could have injected them with that elixir, that tonic to make them um, proceed to all, all of a sudden suspend the National Chairman Party, that process has to be interrogated very carefully and uh, we need to put our ears to the ground. All right. Thank you so much. I, I needed, and, and I'm grateful that you're able to respond to all of this uh, so that uh, you're the party in power and all of the issues that we raised before the core issue we brought you in uh, concerns you. So let's get to the screening exercise. We understand that entire 16 of them uh, uh, were screened and they were all successful and they are now campaigning for ahead of April the 20th. Can you walk us through some of the criteria that was used uh, for the screening exercise for the governorship aspirants. Oh yes, let, let, but before saying that, let me let me. Um, it would be appropriate and fit to also thank the leadership of the party, um, the National Working Committee, for giving that kind of a serious assignment, for considering us, seven of us, to undertake that assignment on behalf of the party. And so, for me, and by extension, the chairman of the party, the chairman of um, the Screening Committee, um, His Excellency Joshua Lidani, um, former, former Deputy Governor of Gombe State and two-time Senator, alongside the other members. I want to say we're very grateful and um, we appreciate the fact that you could um, count us fit enough to undertake that task. Having said that, um, the intention of the party um, to put together, of course, um, that Screening Committee also has an expression as an authority, is backed by authority inside um, the constitution of the party to set up, right to set up um, committees, hard hoc committees and um, standing committees and all of that. So this is one of the most important committees going to an election so that the party could first and foremost ensure that every member of the party who has come forward to say we want to run, presenting themselves to run for that election, um, will also be able to be on the right side of expectations and law, you know, and rules of the party. We don't want a situation, I'm not too sure what the party would like would be, or any member of the, any, any sincere member of the party would like a repeat of the scenario of what happened in Bielsa State. So this is like, let's dot our I's and let us cross our T's. Let's ensure that all possible um, loopholes, if there are any, are well covered so that first and foremost the aspirants by, by themselves could be assured that the party is free is giving them a free and fair platform to run without um, without pointing in the direction of anybody and then number two to also ensure that the party does not play cheaply too into the hands of the opposition having said that the parties put together um, um, a broad context you know, that we needed to check every aspirant, potential. This, don't forget that these are potential governors, okay? And then we wanted to be too sure. Um, or by, when I say we, I'm talking about the party. The party will want to be too sure, one, that that person that is seeking to fly the banner of the party, which is a very sacred, sacred um, privilege to have to fly the banner of the party at the level of gubernatorial election. So, Taking that strongly, the party will want you to show that you understand clearly what the mission and the vision and the um, ethos of the party is. How well grounded are you? How well do you understand 
the concept of the APC and the kind of political right. inclination and corner that the APC has chosen. That's number one. Number two, the party will also like to be, to, to be sure that you are responsible enough that you have kept faith with the party by paying your membership dues. Number three, the party will want to also be sure that every claim that you have adude, alluded, that you have claimed, put forward in your form, that you can back it up with vital and cogent um, um, certificates, if, 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 if the certificates are needed, or documents where you have made such claims. So that all in all, anybody who eventually goes to the field or alongside every other person that goes into the field, you can be too sure that the party can say that we have done our due diligence. Okay, because uh, the reason why that, I, I naturally ask that question, Bill, because we saw things flying around when the Aborigines had endorsed uh, Governor Yedatiwa over Akinterewa and OK, uh, among other people, there were 10 of them prone down to three and then they were endorsed. They were the, after that incident, I had a conversation with some lawyers here that were related to the issues that were complaining or raising aside, uh, issues around the governor. The credentials, the academic credential. He got certificate in 1982 from Ikosi High School in K2, but the school came into being in 1980 and uh, was accredited to do that exam in 1985. Was that an issue that was raised in that screening at all? Oh, yes. Um, of course, that came up. And um, I think the governor defended himself to the, ex to the best of his ability. And for us as um, a committee, we relied on the documents provided. One of the documents that the governor provided um, at that screening was his uh, um, YX certificate. And nobody has, I'm not too sure that anybody has impugned the integrity of that YX certificate. And what, what um, the, the rule says is that if you claim to have that minimum certificate, you must be able to show it. And the governor went on to explain, um, excuse me, went on, went on to explain that um, um, he was in, uh, he started the secondary school from uh, New Horizon or something like that, one, one school. And that school at some point got merged with Ikosi High School in Lagos around K2 area. And that um, he eventually sat for that exam um, um, at Ikosi High School. You know, so the, the, the certificate didn't come from Ikosi High School. The, the certificate he presented before us was his YX certificate. The trajectory to getting that certificate may be something that anybody would want to um, talk about. But to us as a committee, we looked at that qualification. And I think we were reasonably satisfied that that certificate that came from YX was not disputed. It wasn't something that anybody was. I mean, had any disputation about what the issue was. Okay, how did he get his certificate? How did he get his YEC when he got into that school like in 1982 or the school? Uh, how did he get that YEC certificate in 1985 when the school was not in existence as up until 1982? All of those details, I think the governor has also gone ahead. He presented an affidavit. He presented all other supporting documents that gave us the comfort to say, we understand too well that we had a burden to discharge. We had an obligation. We were not, we were not going to um, take lightly the responsibility that the party gave to us or entrusted into our hands, for which we are grateful. And so we, we committed ourselves to do everything that we could. So we used the fine tooth comb to look at all the presentations alongside one of the things that the party will also want us to know is to also show that you have the capacity, understanding all it takes to be a governor of the APC stock. So um, having looked at everything that was presented to us and before us by Governor Idatiwa, I think we were reasonably convinced that um, it could proceed to... We, 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 Mr. Daramola, without trying to beg the issue of this is credential, the reason why we're raising this is because, for instance, when you go to INEC, INEC will naturally public your credentials so that anybody that has um, any disagreement to those credentials will come forward. And this discrepancy in terms of founding, when it got, as well as accreditation period, besides presenting this document to the committee, 
uh, does the committee, I'm, I'm, not, I'm talking of, I'm not just talking of the governor alone, him and the rest, does the community go beyond just accepting this document or it goes ahead to at least verify whether the authenticity of this document from source or it just takes it for, the, for, for what they say and what they present? I just wanted to find out. Yeah, um, before our committee was inaugurated, um, the party also went the extra mile to put, it, to put together another committee before us called the Vetting Committee. Okay, the vetting committee, I believe, had gone ahead to look at the credibility and the integrity of those certificates and whatever document that these um, gentlemen and ladies have presented. And I believe that one of the one of the source documents that the party graciously presented to us to work with was the report of the vetting committee about what they found about every aspirant. Oh, where, where an aspirant had missed out his uh, membership certificate or something missing, they pointed that out. So when they eventually appeared before us, which were just gatekeeping. So when they eventually came before us, the source document that we worked with, first and foremost, apart from oral testimony and oral presentations, was to look at what the vetting committee had to say about every aspirant. So, issue of the integrity and the fidelity of their claims of all documents, I think they, we, I mean, we have gone past that at the level of the vetting committee before the party went ahead to constitute another screening committee to now screen on the basis of the vetting report. So let's talk about the preparations uh, in terms of uh, ahead of the 20th of <clears throat> April, which is just a few days, about five days from now. Uh, we've seen what plays out in primary elections uh, ahead of the main poll. Uh, what are the guarantees that the party as a national party and even at the state level, uh, given the fact that the incumbent himself is also gunning for this office, is given to all of the aspirants, 16 or 15 or 16 of them, including the governor, that is going to be there's going to be a level playing ground such that there's no predetermined outcome or somebody is not a preferred choice of the party at the top. Well, um, I can only speak. <laughs> uh, you're, you're giving me, you're giving me, you're dressing me in a robe that is bigger than me. Um, well, through first and foremost, throughout all our screaming process, nobody whispered anything, any preferred candidate to anybody. So I, I want to believe very strongly that the party um, will hold that to, will be true to that account to say, oh, we're presenting, we're giving all of you um, a level playing field to contest. Number two is the fact that um, from what I have seen and from what I think I know, I, I, I reasonably want to give it to the party um, and the disposition of the party to let everybody, to let all boards fly. Yeah, I, I don't. I have not seen anything to suggest that um, the party or the leadership or yes, they may. I mean, there may be people who have preferred candidates and all of that. But the truth of the matter is that um, thus far till this moment, I believe that what the party has allowed has directly um, showed from every every angle of it is that everybody should go talk to Undo people, particularly members of our party, the APC, and see. Um, and let the will of the people prevail. And the last, as we begin to wind down, um, I'm, I'm sure you have something to tell all of these gentlemen who are, I think a, a lady is involved, think just one lady, uh, if I'm to two, be correct. No, actually two. Two, two ladies, two ladies uh, yes, are involved. Yes, two ladies, two ladies are involved. That's what they say. So you have two, uh, 14 gentlemen and two ladies. Um, uh, what 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 will you be telling them to do at the moment as a key member of this screening? You have done your job to screen them, but now it's up to them to talk to the people in terms Absolutely. of how they can garner and appeal yeah. the, to the interest of the people. On the last uh, 30 seconds. Oh, well, well, um, I have walked this path before, and um, um, what the fate, the fate of all 16 of them, first and foremost, only one person will win. It is it's one, it's one seat that 16 people are jostling for. Number two, I think 
they should dig, dig down now, dig down deeper and begin to dot their eyes and cross their T's. We're in the closing days of the campaigns running out to primaries. And I believe that a whole of them will still have a number of places to touch up and let their message or messages sink in. Let the people understand them for who they are and their capacity and capability to take on those states to the next level. I'm sure that people will give a lot of credit to what Arakuni, um, Ar Arotimi Akredilu had done in that state. And I believe that um, nobody wants to drop the ball. So Ondo people will be looking forward to um, the best person who has the capacity, demonstrated capacity to be able to move um, that state to the next level. And I wish all of the 16 of them the best of luck. Um, ultimately, to ensure that the party keeps that state on, in the lock and um, under the barrel of um, the uh, All Progressives Congress. Well, my thank you, Mr. Abimba Daramola, Secretary on the Governorship Screening Committee of the APC. Thank you so much for coming and for explaining to us how these things work behind the scene. We must thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take a quick break. We did tell you that uh, we're going to be talking a lot about what's happening in the APC. The first conversation uh, was the issue of the Ondo politics ahead of their primaries and the main election. The second is part of where we started from, that Abdullahi Gunduje, the national chairman of the APC, has now been suspended by his ward. And there is a counter suspension from the local government suspending members of the ward. The people in the know will join us to explain what exactly is going on to make sense of the situation. Join us again. Welcome back. It's now time to talk about what's going on in Kanu State as far as the APC is concerned. The national chairman of the party has been suspended in his ward. His ward members have now been suspended by the local government. What is happening? Abdullahi Fagi is the APC State Legal Advisor. He joins us from Abuja Studio. Mr. Fagi, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Of course, uh, help us make sense of this avalanche of suspensions and counter suspension. Let's begin from a very generic note. We saw the report that the national chairman was suspended in his ward and we saw another report that those people who suspended the national chairman have now been suspended. Maybe walk us through what exactly is going on. So, thank you very much. Actually, yes, I have gone even through the two reports myself, just barely 10 minutes before coming into this studio. Well, for the first one, let me put it categorically clear to all viewers that there was no any suspension made against the national chairman of APC, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji. Why I said so is because all those that said they have suspended the national chairman were not even the members of the All Progressive Congress, took less of being the executive members of the Ganduja Ward of Doakin Tofa Local Government Council. So for any suspension to said to have been made, it must be made by those who are invested with the power, with the bias, with the capacity to do so. So this person, especially the person that Alex said to be the youth leader of that ward, was not a member of the party and he was is not a member of the party and has never been member of all progressive Congress. So also the other members that said they are the executive members of that ward. So that is why I said that there was no any suspension, even ab initio, because the suspension cannot just be made by any person. The suspension, if there is any suspension, it must be made by the legitimate executive members of that word, but not just any person to be sponsored to come and say. In fact, I was even surprised when some online dailies even carried that report. All right, Mr. Fage, if, if I may button, 
My, my apologies if I'm a uh, because of time. I want to get your reaction to this as quickly as, as much of them as possible. Are you saying, because what we know is that the executive council of the Ganduje ward, uh, led by Haruna Guanjo, are you saying you don't know who Haruna Guanjo is? Is that what you're saying? Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. The Ahmad Muhammad Ganduje, the chairman of the Ganduje Award, and this is their letter. I don't know whether it can be seen here. This is the letter. The Ibero, they held a meeting immediately after seeing that report. All the executive members of the Ganduje Award, 27 of them in 27 of them, if the time permit, I will even read with their signature, their name, their designation. All of them, they sign the letter, this is their letter and their report, denying and denouncing that suspension, purported suspension said to have been made. And that, the same There's person, person you call is the There's first person, that is what chairman, Ahmad Muhammad Gwanjuje, look at his signature. So Faget, all we the saw, executive but, members, 27 of them, wrote a letter to the world, to the local government executive committee as well as the state, denying the fact that all those that said they were the members of the Ganduja ward were not the members. These are the Janun mem uh, executive members, and they deny that letter. And in fact, all those that claim so, to be so the members, are you saying, there Ms. is even Ms. a machinery Faget. set in motion now for Ms. them. For the complaint of impersonation, we, we need to get this. We need to get this clear. Uh, also, as I, I would plead with you, answer my questions just as they come. Do you know Mr. Haruna Guanjo? Okay. I know him. Is he an executive member of that ward? He's he's not the executive member of that ward because the signature is not his. So who is Haruna Guanjo? He didn't affix his signature to that letter. So who is Haruna Guanjo? Hello? So who because is this is the Haruna Guanjo that deny, that deny signing that letter. Me, me, Mr. Ahmad Fage, Muhammad my, my, my sincere apologies. We're, we're, Mr. Fage, we're totally out of time. So we need to get this fact right. You say you know him. Is not, okay. So who is he? Who is Haruna Guanjo that led this press briefing? Who is in the party? That's why I said he is he's, he's not even the member of our party, the person that led that briefing. He is not the member of the party. He's not the same Ahmad Muhammad Ganduja. That is the real and actual now, chairman uh, of it, the party. Mr. Mr. Farge, the reason I'm asking is it's a bit confusing that did you also see that the executive members were suspended by the local government uh, executive as well? No, that suspension was not a respect of those that wrote that letter. There, are, there were two members. There were two members of executive of that ward that were part of that issue of suspension. But all the other members that claimed to be the members of the executive of that ward were not even the members of that ward, were not even the members of APC. All right, just, uh, we're totally out of time, but if my producer can help me play the, if we have that clip, I think there's a translation of when that suspension took place. I, I want you to hear it. Today, on the 15th of April 2024, we, the leaders of the APC in Ganduja Ward, working to power local government, engaged in thorough deliberation and subsequently decided to suspend the erstwhile governor of Kano State, 
Abdullahi Umar Ganduji in light of the allegation of bribery involving foreign currency. It has come to our attention that Ganduji has been summoned to court to answer for these accusations, a development that we believe could potentially besmirch the reputation of our esteemed political party. This resolution was reached collectively on behalf of all executive members of the APC in Ganduja Ward, Dewa Kintupa, local government, Kano State. So those were the people, their faces and their signature. Uh, so do you still stand on what you said? Exactly. Why? Because this is the 27 members executive committee of Ganduja Ward, and they deny ever suspending Abdi, uh, uh, Abdullah Umar Ganduja, the national chairman, and in fact, they even now lodge a complaint against those that claim to be the executive of that Ganduja ward. They even lodge complaint against them before police. Right. So if there right. is even complaint against those that they said we have suspended the national chairman, and they now, ha in fact, to, in the evening, they held a press conference, all the executive of Ganduja ward, they deny ever written that letter, and they, all the 27 executive members, and I have just shown you so, their names, so, their list, and their designation, all of them. All right, Mr. Fage, apparently we need to now look for- so This letter director. doesn't Mr. emanate from them. All right, we, 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 the SBC will have to explain to us why the no. letter has emanated from, where there is a counter suspension to people that are non-existent or uh, did not sign the letter. It's, it's a bit, uh, but I'm sure there's an explanation. I must thank you, Mr. Abdullahi Fage, APC Legal Advisor in Kano State. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's it on the program. Thank you for your time and company. I'm Jeffrey Ozama. Thank you for watching. Good night.